Hey guys, welcome back to the Unity course. In today's video, we're going to be talking about random, so um, randomization of number in video games. So um, right here, we need some kind of random number only for spawning the apple at some different places. We always spawn the apple at the same place at the beginning, that's fine. I mean, um, this position is fine with me, you can always have it there for the first apple, but then after that, we need to find a new position. We need to find a position that our apple is going to spawn, and it has to be somewhere that isn't on top of our snake else we're not gonna see it and it's also not gonna uh, fit with the rules of snake so we're gonna be seeing two things today we're gonna see how to generate in a random number which is um, the main topic but we're also gonna be seeing the while loop now um, the while loop is just like a for loop but we don't have those extra statement uh, the first one and third one we don't have the first statement and the third statement in the for loop we only have the middle one which checks for a condition so let's have a look down here um, wherever we do eat the apple, then we have to spawn a new one. So create a new apple, which is um, this line here in our code. So here's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to pick a random number in between the lowest x and the largest x we have. That's only like, you know, like on, on the x-axis. So we, we have a grid that is 10, so we pick a number in between 0 and 9. And um, here's how we do it. Let's do int x is going to equal to random. And now there's two types of random. You have the one that is from uh, csharp.net and you also have the one that is from Unity Engine. For this case, let's use Unity Engine. They pretty much all work the same, so it doesn't really matter, but um, let's use the one from Unity Engine. So I'll do Unity Engine dot random and then we get a function called range, which is going to return you um, a random number in between two values you give it. So in our case, zero is going to be the first value, the minimum value. And the maximum is going to be, um, we have our tiles, so let's do, what's the name of our tiles? I totally forgot. So we have our grid, that's our array, and then we do a get length at the index 0. So we get length of the first dimension in our array, which is, you know, 0 to 10. Uh, so in this case, get length would return you 10. Now I'll do the same thing down here for the y. So int y is equal to, uh, you do a random in between 0 and then get length, which is also, you know, it's also going to be a number in between 0 and 10 because we have the same size for the grid um, in x and y, which we will modify eventually to make it more uh, fun to play. Okay, so let's do a debug.log now and do x and y. Or actually x plus y, x to string plus y. So we can actually have a, a look at the console down there. What kind of number did it return us? Now, of course, you don't have to do this. I just want to have you know some kind of uh, feedback right away from doing that. So as you can tell down here in the console, we've got 1 and 0. So it gave us 1 in x and then 0 in y. Um, that was the first time. Now, on the second time I tried this, it gave me 3 in x and 8 in y. So as you can tell, the number does change. And if we were to play it again, it would probably be a different number set. So 9 and 0 in this case. And I just realized that I forgot to turn off my stream overlay. Sorry about that. Um, won't happen again um, but basically we've got a different number every time that's definitely what we want but now what if that number actually points toward the tile where our snake is we would not see it well you know what even before we, we, we get to that point let's actually spawn an apple wherever this is so to spawn an apple I'm gonna be using the same code I've got uh, here so what we did is um, we set the, the tile to minus one, which means this is now apple, and then we create a new prefab called apple prefab. We set the position and we also change the game object dot name. So let's grab all of that, go down to our code, and I'll just paste it here. Instead of doing uh, eight and four, we'll do x and y. We are going to need another name for this game object because we already have one in the scope, so apple doesn't matter because it's gonna be deleted as soon as you exit this bracket here. Well, let's call it apple, and then it will do apple the transformed position is equal to x and y, and then apple the name is equal to apple. All right, so let's give this a try. Hopefully, everything works like in the first try. And as you can tell, it did spawn an apple just next to it actually, so that was kind of weird, but still, that's part of the rules. And then we just keep on spawning stuff like that. And that is our problem right there. So it's bound an apple on top of our snake, which is something we definitely do not want to happen during a real game. So what we're going to be doing is before we actually spawn an apple, we're going to be using a while statement to um, actually check 
is that is that Apple we're trying to spawn on top of something else? And also, we seem to have a bug here where there is just one part of the snake that just remains there. So 82 didn't get delete properly, so we'll have to um, try and reproduce this, find out what the problem is, and eventually solve it. But let's go with um, our very first problem, which is the fact that it's spawned an apple somewhere on top of our snake. And I think that is also because, um, that is also the reason why we might have that um, bug that just happened where there was just this random tile floating. That's because he didn't got deleted and he didn't really get deleted. That is because his value inside of it was not above zero. So it never did a minus minus on it. So um, that's just a, a thought I had. Um, but to make sure that this does not happen, what we are gonna be doing is wrap all of these things, just wrap all of these inside of a while loop. Now check this out. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna create a while loop. So like I've mentioned earlier, a while loop is just like a for loop, but we don't get the first part where we instantiate or uh, initialize some kind of field. We only get the second part where we test a condition. We don't get the third one where we do uh, increment like any kind of action. We only get like the middle part where we are just gonna keep repeating this on and on and on until that condition is no longer met. So here's how I'll go about it. I'll create a Boolean here, just a temporary Boolean, and I'll call it um, Apple created it's going to be equal to false by default. And then as long as Apple has not been created, we are going to run this code right here. So check this out. This is how I split the whole code. All we wrote a second ago is now inside of a for loop. So it's going to keep being repeated on and on and on and on until it actually creates an Apple somewhere. Well, actually, right now it's just going to work once, right? Um, if we were to just say Apple created is equal to true then this is only gonna work once. But what I'm going to do is add a condition right here on top of that code and do a if statement. So this is what is going to change pretty much everything. I am going to do if statement, wrap everything in here, and we're gonna do, well, is there something in grid? If grid at the index x and y is equal equal to zero, that means we are free to actually spend an apple there. But you know, if that number, if that grid x and y is actually bigger than zero that means there is a part of the snake there there is a part of the snake body basically so we can't we can't spam anything there there's already something but if it's equal to zero everything is fine we are going to go ahead and just say apple create is equal to true which is going to make us exit this while loop um, whenever we try to rerun it again so let's have a look now and i understand that this technique might actually be <laughs> quite um painful because at the end it's gonna be really hard to find that empty spot. So I realize that there's flaws in that way to go, but this is what we're gonna be dealing with right now as we are learning how to code. So as you can tell, it doesn't seem to ever spawn, um, if I don't mess up, doesn't seem to ever spawn an apple on top of the snake body, which is also going to fix the last bug where we've seen um, some random part of the snake body just stay there. And I think we are pretty much good to go at this point. We just managed to implement our random. So right now we have a apple spawning at random places and we also have our while loop. So you have another, um, another understanding on how another kind of loop works. Now in the next episode, we're gonna be working with a little bit of UI, just dis displaying the score of um, the player and also maybe have like some kind of menu scene, some really quick stuff, really quick menu scene we can have. So, you know, you don't start the game right off the bat with the snake moving. So you have actually some kind of introduction of some kind. So again, uh, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. And also make sure to check out the Facebook page, the Patreon page, the all those pages, subscribe to the channel, of course, and I will see you next time. Cheers.